All right, so we're finally at risk management. One of the things you've heard me say throughout the lecture is when we're determining how much security is necessary, what our goal is is to provide just enough security. And remember, just enough security does not mean we're trying to see what the very minimum we can get away with is. What it means is we figure out the value of what we're protecting, we take a good and thorough look at the threats and the vulnerabilities, and then we do a cost-benefit analysis to determine how much we spend. Remember, the whole purpose of security is to support the business. So if we're adding more security than is beneficial to the business, we're doing a disservice. You know, so many times you run up against security screen versus security screen versus security screen, and if we're protecting high-value data, that's worth it. But if I'm selling frozen, frozen yogurt at the, the shopping center, we may not necessarily have to go through all those security hoops. So the bottom line is risk management drives how much security that we implement. So the first thing we're going to talk about in this section is we're going to look at some basic definitions and terms because we have to be able to talk about risk intelligently. As a matter of fact, risk management is security management and security management is risk management. That's all we're doing is we're looking at threats and vulnerabilities, value of asset, potential for loss, and then determining a good mitigation strategy. So we'll talk about all that with the definition. Then we'll talk about different types of risk. Not all risk is created equal. We'll talk about governance and compliance because when we do talk about governance, we need to know based on the specific industry that we're operating within, what are the security guidelines and industry standards we have to follow. Then we'll look at some models of risk management and then we'll talk about some options in dealing with risk. So as we move forward just talking about some risk definitions, uh, the first ones really we talk about and honestly this isn't on the slide but the first thing I would define would be asset. And what is an asset? An asset is something we value, something we want to protect. And we have to make sure that we're aware that not all assets are tangible. You know, if I have a computer that I bought last year for 400 bucks, if I were to ask you what it's worth today, you might tell me 300 250 you know, significantly less. And that's only if you're valuing the hardware. Because I agree, the hardware will go down in, in value. But what about the data that's on that computer? That's where the real value comes from. Because the data may have value to me. It may have taken me many hours to create and produce that. It might have value to my customers. Uh, it might have value to my competitors. You know, what if I have proprietary training information that's only good that separates my business away from other uh, companies? Intellectual property. What about if I have healthcare information and I'm subject to a $10,000 fine from HIPAA, should that information be disclosed? Well, all of a sudden that $300 laptop is worth a whole lot more. So it's important that we always start with identifying what we're protecting and what its value. From there, we look at the threats and the vulnerabilities. So when we talk about the threats, anything that's going to harm the asset. A vulnerability is the weakness within the asset. So when we talk about the potential or the likelihood that a threat will exploit a vulnerability, that's the risk. So there's an 80% chance that, an, that a virus would uh, attack our client-based systems if we don't do anything about viruses. That would be the risk, the likelihood that the threat would materialize. Now when we talk about the exploit itself, that's the instance of compromise. We talk about controls. Controls are where uh, we put um, uh, some sort of risk mitigation strategy in place. And we can be proactive with our controls whose design uh, is to stop the attack. And we can be reactive. Things that will help us if the attack was successful to a degree. So when we talk about sanitizing our data, doing input validation, that's a proactive control and we generally refer to those as safeguards. When we talk about reactive, like how exceptions are handled or, um, you know, even things like intrusion detection systems, audit logs, those are reactive. But the bottom line is they're both types of controls and we need both proactive and reactive. Um, Types of risk. There is total risk, and again, total risk isn't on this slide, but I'm going to add it on there. 
Total risk is the amount of risk before we implement a safeguard. So for instance, if I don't implement uh, input validation with my uh, web pages, what is the potential for loss? If I do nothing about it, I know that there is code injection as a threat, but I decide not to address that threat, what's my potential for loss? And that's my total risk. So obviously, in that case, my total risk is going to be too high. So what do I do? I implement some mitigation strategies. Those mitigation strategies ideally will bring the risk down into a level that's tolerable by senior management. Great. But we rarely talk about truly eliminating a risk. What we look at doing is bringing that level of risk down to a level that's acceptable by management and that's not zero usually. Usually management will allow some degree of risk because it's so expensive to talk about eliminating risk. So the risk that's left over is referred to as our residual risk. And we always want that residual risk to be within a level that's tolerable by senior management. Okay, also when we implement one risk response, frequently we open up another potential for risk. Like for instance, if we apply uh, an operating system patch, well that OS patch may fix one security related issue, but it may cause another mechanism not to work. So that's a secondary risk. When we fix one problem just to cause another. All right, uh, other things that we think about in relation to risk, a fallback plan. What if our first risk mitigation strategy doesn't work or if it doesn't work well enough? Well, then we need a fallback plan. That's a planned response. If none of that works, we wind up using a workaround. And a workaround is not planned. A workaround usually involves duct tape and chewing gum and we're just trying to think on our feet and patch this system together. Okay. So these are some definitions I'd like you to have with risk. This is what we're going to be using as we move forward.